welcome to path of mind today i want to discuss about a case that i have received in my department and which was reported to be a mature cystic teratoma just jump before jumping into the topic i want to give a brief introduction regarding teratoma which is a tumor that consists of two or more germ layers that means we have this ectoderm ecto meso and endoderms these are the three layers three germ layers so this teratoma it contains two either ecto meso or ecto endo or meso endo or it can contain all the three germ layers that is two or two plus all three germ layers can be identified this teratoma it is classified into immature and mature so before uh, i mean initially i had this notion that immature means uh, i mean lkg nursery kind of uh, uh, childhood form so it is benign mature means it is adult so it could be malignant but it is exactly the opposite uh, this is how i remember now immature means children are very immature childhood it is notorious children make more notorious acts so it could be unsafe sometimes so immature could be malignant immature can be malignant not always it can be malignant mature as you reach the adulthood you become more mature and you you become very stabilized and you are safe to handle that means you are benign so mature in case i mean this uh, this is how i remember in and it comes to teratoma mature means benign immature means malignant this immature how do you label this immature teratoma just by identifying one element that is the primitive presence of primitive neuroepithelial cells this is the only identifying factor to label it as a immature teratoma primitive neuroepithelial cells can be identified as a small round blue cells presence of small round blue cells uh, it is primitive neuroepithelial cells so you can label it as a mature teratoma this is the only identifying factor for to label as immature immature teratoma when it comes to mature which is a benign form it can be again sub classified as mature solid and mature cystic this division into solid or cystic it is purely on the basis of its gross appearance when you cut a teratoma when you cut the specimen that you receive on cut section of the two halves if it is a solid i mean a solid components you find solid homogeneous component then you label it as mature solid if there are no solid components the entirely it is cystic i mean entirely it is cavity is there cavity filled up with some material entirely most predominantly cavity then it is mature cystic so this division of solid and cystic is based on this gross appearance predominantly when if at all you receive the cystic components see this is the cystic component where you find this uh, hair some query cartilage and you find this protuberance you have to check for a protuberance for hard uh, um, any hard finding in the cystic wall why is it so important it is called a rocky tansky protuberance it is important because it carries a foci of cancer foci of cancer though this mature forms are almost benign presence of this rocky tansky protuberance makes it important because it carries a foci of cancer so so it is important to check for this uh, rocky tansky protuberance whenever you find a cystic cavity so this is the case that i am talking about we received this specimen large ovarian cyst along with three other masses on cut section of this largest bit so it was entirely filled up with this greasy extremely greasy material which was very heavy it was very extremely greasy and large tufts of hair were seen entangled tufts of hair on further clean up a little bit of clean up you could find this uh, I, mean, i could i cannot say it is hard like a bone but uh, the scalpel was easily passing through it i could cut through it so we put it as query cartilage it could be a query cartilage so on cut section on gross leaf uh, we could identify this greasy material sebum large tufts of hair tufts of hair this query cartilage kind of thing so for the clean up you can find this dark areas in the cyst wall there were dark areas in the cyst wall from where we could uh, take the bits this greasy material hair and the cartilage that we could appreciate on gross appearance on microscopic examination uh, i divided this into ectodermal mesodermal and endodermal origin components we could identify all the three uh, components 
Firstly, we'll start with ectodermal component. We appreciated this stratified squamous epithelium. Stratified squamous epithelium. And here you could also see the sebaceous glands. Sebaceous glands. See, this is the foci of purely sebaceous glands. This grape like structure, these are the sebaceous glands. It was lightly stained. And this is the hair follicle. This is the hair follicle, sebaceous glands. In this slide, yeah, clear view. The sebaceous glands, all these grape clusters, which were the clusters, these are the sebaceous glands. This is the glial tissue, mature glial tissue. It is not a primitive one, it is a mature glial tissue. Mature glial tissue, which is of again ectodermal origin. Now, let's start about the mesodermal origin components. This, yeah, this is the cartilage. This is the cartilage. This is the fibrous tissue. This empty spaces are the adipose tissue. Adipose tissue is empty as like. This is the hyperview of this cartilage, adipose tissue. Now, this is about uh, the endodermal component. component. This is the so ciliated. This is the cilia. These projections are the cilia. Ciliated, ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium, which is typical this respiratory epithelium, which is of endodermal origin. Here you can find this. This is the thyroid tissue. You could appreciate the thyroid follicles containing thyroglobulin. Here again, this is of endodermal origin. Endodermal origin, thyroid tissue, thyroid tissue here. This is the hyper view of the thyroid tissue. These are the follicles filled up with thyroglobulin colloid material. Thyroid tissue. This is the salivary gland. Salivary glands uh, you identify by the typical staining. It is uh, darkly stained. It is intensely stained comparatively. Sebaceous glands are not that intensely stained. But salivary glands are intensely stained. Typical staining pattern. This is of endodermal origin. This is of endodermal origin. Yeah, and uh, I would like to tell you about a monodermal teratoma. I mean, all these teratomas, they contain two or more germ layers. But if at all, what if it contains only one uh, germ layer? It is called monodermal. It is a monodermal uh, teratoma. Teratoma. That is, I mean, most of the times, predominantly, it is thyroid tissue. Thyroid tissue in the ovary. It is called, typical name is Struma ovary. Struma ovary. Yeah, this I would like to mention when it comes to presence of one germ layer. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you all. Have a nice day.